Every YouTuber has one of those. Before we get going, I just want to say this video is probably a little shorter than I personally would like. Off the Air has been a super influential show for me and I wanted to do it justice. However, I'm learning that words might not be an effective way of doing that. Please, when you are done watching this video, go watch some episodes and let me know how you would describe or discuss them. Okay, time for the real intro. Hope you enjoy the video. Good afternoon and welcome to my little corner of the internet. If you ask me what I thought the most influential and important show on Adult Swim is to me, I don't think many would be surprised if I said Tim and Eric Awesome Show, Rick and Morty, or Eric Andre. I do think many would be taken aback if I said off the air. Nine years ago, when I was a greasy-haired high school attending dork, all my greasy-haired dork friends were out partying, having sex, and doing drugs. Where was I? I was at home doing drugs, staying up late and discovering the piece of media that is more than likely entirely responsible for melding my young soft child brain into the abstract and chaotic art appreciating internet dweller I am today. That show of course being Off The Air. It is another Adult Swim series we are going to cover, though this one thankfully has the ability to exist a little longer than Shop A Pop Opera ever could. I'm excited to have this art discussion with you today. Off the Air is not a show with a progression we can walk through or one that I can spoil for you. It takes the form of an anthology, often also referred to as a video mixtape or just a bundle of curated content. It's essentially a bunch of clips that Dave and his team have aggregated and meshed together with artsy craft glue in a way that celebrates the forms of media, mostly internet media, that gets presented, as well as create something new from all of its pieces. Each episode begins with a quick clip that transitions to a title card that also serves as an introduction to the topic for the rest of the episode's runtime, which is usually left pretty open-ended and broad to allow as diverse a set of clips as possible. Here are a few examples. The title card will masterfully fade into the next clip, usually edited or set to music, and we are thrown into David Hughes' psyche or internet browsing history. Flying from YouTube clips, high production music videos, artistic short films, stock footage, and animated shorts, each seemingly transitioning into the other with a clever mask or psychedelic data mosh. Having Dave at the helm, the pacing stays appropriate to what you just witnessed, as he allows the content itself to define the mood and speed at which we float or run into the next scene. Just as a quick example, in case you haven't gotten to experience the brilliance for yourself, an episode labeled Sidewalk would look something like this. And David's threading together of these clips are what I believe the show is most known for. He has mastered the art of pacing and moving along a show of clips so loosely related to one another. And I believe he may be the best in the world. I'd like to see if he teaches a class. I have a personal love for the anthology format. Movies like the ABCs of Death, skit-based shows like Odd Future Wolf Gang Kill 'Em All, and Whitest Kids You Know, or even iDubs Don't Watch This series. 
they appeal to my Ritalin riddled ADHD brain. Off the Air being a bit more standout because its creator Dave Hughes will scour the internet for interesting and related clips while tying them together with Dave's personal talent, tactful, artistically pleasing transitions. Now that I am viewing these clips retrospectively, trying to analyze them and see maybe why Dave chose each one and how they all fit together, it is a little heartwarming just to see how undiscriminatory he is. There is such a wide selection of genres and varying degrees of quality. He's aggregated a lot of content that is funny, entertaining, and that can be understood, I feel, outside of much cultural context. Davis said in a few interviews that his main goal is to use the money he gets allocated for the show to go and either commission or get permission to use art from independent artists that wouldn't otherwise get the opportunity as opposed to pay licenses for art that is more commercially accessible. You might have a few questions about the legality or the morality of having a TV show based on clips from YouTube or stock footage. Dave and his team do get the rights from every clip they use from what I can tell each artist gets compensated for each role. The show has spawned a very small genre of people trying to recreate the magic with off-the-air fan maids. However, I would like to deter people from doing this as creative and fun as it is to thread these clips like the all-powerful Dave. Uh, understand those clips were made by somebody. If your episode takes off and gets popular, you have likely put an already underappreciated artist in a position of defense, and they now have to choose whether or not to remove or copyright your video, or just let you profit off their work. If you appreciate the show enough to imitate it, please understand the reason the show exists to celebrate little unknown artists. Create something worth being featured in an off the air episode instead. With that being said, I think it's important to talk about the show's creator, David Hughes. Mr. Hughes fell in love with video at a very early age, and although not focusing on it for his entire childhood, the skills he acquired as a hobbyist got his foot in the door at a still relevant and in its prime MTV. For a little known hidden gem show, Beavis and Butthead. Don't worry, not many people have heard of it either. During this time, however, as a fan of Adult Swim and its programming, he began to see the network scooting closer and closer to a more nominal and, in his words, less experimental direction. But eventually, MTV waned from relevance and thus cut their animation department, leaving David to find work at Nicktoons, which he made traditional pieces of commercials for, for the network, and you know, all this other stuff. And you can find all this information in a really good interview by Austin McCannis with Juxtapose, link in the description. Finally, he winds up at Adult Swim, working on Space Ghost with Matt Harrington, where he ultimately pitched off the air. I was going to do a bit of a description of how Adult Swim was the best home for off the air, and with any other network, the type of viewer that stumbled across the videos probably wouldn't have enjoyed them quite as much as the Adult Swim audience. However, Emperor Lemon recently did a video about Rick and Marty and put the point into much better words, and he gave me permission to use the bit, so I'll just let him explain it. Adult Swim had always existed as a playground of artistic expression and creative experimentation. It's a channel within a channel, allowing it to operate without the financial responsibilities of a major media network. In the early days, Adult Swim mainly subsisted by syndicating canceled shows from the Fox network. They had a small but loyal viewer base who were instrumental in convincing network executives to give shows like Futurama a second chance. However, the most intriguing parts of Adult Swim can be found in their original programming. For the longest time, Adult Swim originals were characterized by extremely crude, low-budget animation and avant-garde humor. Part of the charm of shows like Aqua Teen Hunger Force is that something so strange could exist on television at all. This type of show earned Adult Swim the unofficial label of the stoner's paradise, but I don't think it's fair to define the network along this narrow premise. Adult Swim boldly greenlit shows that couldn't exist on any other network. The Boondocks was a beautifully animated, brilliantly written show that offered cogent commentary on social issues, but due to its narrow appeal, no other network wanted it. Adult Swim was the lone network who didn't care about marketability. They handed artists the reins to present their vision, unfiltered and unneutered by a rigid obligation to appeasing corporate overlords. I would just like to say... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dave has a pretty scarce online presence. I believe it's likely so people aren't pitching him clips for Off the Air or the Adult Swim shorts he also plays a pivotal role in. 
His LinkedIn has no photo, his IMDb has no photo. It was a struggle to put a face to the name here, but I did it and I will reveal to you the face of the man behind off the air. Who's that Pokemon? It's ah, uh, just kidding. That would be an asshole thing to do. Uh, Mr. Hughes, as it appears anyhow, has taken a lot of steps to keep his identity as private as possible, so I won't dox him. However, he has appeared in some obscure programming, and I can't stop you from finding it. This is your hint, by the way. When reading interviews or watching Dave's few video appearances, it's interesting to witness his demeanor and contrast it with his end product. His animations and transitions are so loud and in some cases awe-inspiring. On video, the guy seems incredibly reserved and quiet. Oftentimes, it's pointed out how he's known for not leaving the office. While him answering interview questions, he seems genuine, excited to interact and give answers to anyone interested in what he is up to. To me, he has just come across as a quiet guy who loves his craft with a passion that I am extremely envious of. If you decide to binge off the air, you will eventually run into timeless clips, really wild clips, some you may even recognize from Facebook back when we used that, and even YouTube classics. In the episode Falling, Gavin Free makes an appearance with his big balloon slow-mo video. You'll always come across some recognizable Adult Swim faces, and even one or two Jack Stauber shorts. Off the Air is a diamond in the rough. From a network that is trying to keep experimental television alive, this particular program was born from the fear of them steering away from those roots. The show is one of a kind and the person guiding the ship has a well-trained eye on content he knows will captivate his cult audience. And Dave, if you are watching, because we all know you like to peruse lesser known videos, I wish you the best. And please, for the love of all that is good in modern broadcast, do not stop what you are doing under any circumstances. You're doing God's work. And on that note, it's time to segue over to our preferred method of celebrating internet creators, YouTube Corner. Hey guys, it's me, Lightning McQueen here from the movie Burger King, and today I'm here to talk about my idol who has decided to call himself Duck Duck. I only have like a minute to talk about this, and so far it's already been 11 seconds, so I'm already wasting time talking about wasting time. Duck Duck is the little epiphany of what the fuck is going on. One moment, I'm simply watching this man play normal Skyrim. Then after a while, I take a short break. Then I come back, and the next thing I know, the man's eating a cardboard cutout of Danny fucking DeVito and marrying Sonic as punishment. This man might just be the absolute peak human evolution. Watch one of his videos, I guarantee you will not only laugh, but also forget what the point in the video was, simply because you have no idea what the fuck is going on so yeah subscribe to me dj is uh is sucks trying to avoid being hit in the leg by the bag that is going around and around in the miniature sidewalk whirlwind but the crumpled up bag moves exactly as fast as the speed in which you walk to avoid being